It has happened again. Another child taken as a result of gun violence in one of our nation's largest cities. This time, Demarius Stevenson. At just eight years old, he was shot and killed while playing on the front porch of a home yesterday in a Chicago suburb. Eight. Demetrius is the latest victim in a growing trend, not only in and around Chicago, but sadly, it's happening across America tonight. According to a new report this week from the FBI, killings in the U.S. jumped nearly 30 percent last year, the largest one-year increase in recorded history. Overall, violent crime rose more than 5.5% in 2020. It is an issue that is top of mind for former President Barack Obama. He is in Chicago tonight and earlier today said this to ABC's Robin Roberts. Chicago alone can't solve the gun problem. And as you are well aware during my presidency, talk about something I, I wanted to get done, done that I couldn't get done mm -hmm. was get smarter, common sense, uh, you know, gun safety measures in place through and, and through Congress. But Chicago alone can't stop the easy access and flood of guns into these communities. But what we can do is potentially give young people the sense that there's another way for them to empower themselves other than wielding a gun. The former president and former first lady Michelle Obama broke ground on the Obama Presidential Center today. It's on the south side of Chicago near where the couple met. They raised their children and they launched the former president's political career. The center will include a museum and a new branch of the Chicago Public Library, as well as a public plaza and recreation center. Raymond Anthony Lopez currently serves as the alderman of Chicago's 15th Ward and has been outspoken about the increase of violent crime that he has seen in this city, and he is joining us live here in studio tonight. Alderman, we appreciate your time. Let's start with the Presidential Center. This is going to be in the historic Jackson Park in South Chicago, an area that is known uh, or has been plagued by some of this violence that we're talking about. Will this center give you the optimism that it will help turn things around and revitalize that particular area? Well, it's my hope, and it was the hope of many of my colleagues when we voted to approve this center a few years ago, that this will be a transformative opportunity for the South Side to allow us to address some of those systemic issues that we've seen, like the high unemployment for African-American males, 18 to 24, which in some areas reaches as high as 75 percent. But they have to be a part of this center. They have to be part of building it. They have to be a part of the ownership. And they have to, we have to make sure that the families are still there to be a part of it, too. And I think that's one of the concerns that we've seen with the gentrification. But if we do it right, this can be very good for the south side of Chicago. The one thing that the former president said is violence is not new, and it's something we've been talking about for a long time. We have to get to the root of it. What do you think is the root, not just here in Chicago, of some of the gun violence that we're seeing and the gangs, but across the country, especially in the last couple of years where we see those numbers that's gotten worse? Well, I think one of the things that definitely is causing a lot of the violence that we see is the breakdown of the family unit. You know, we used to have moms, dads, and, and families raising children, and more and more you have electronic devices, you have television, you have iPads, you have all the things that are not human raising children, and they're not learning values. We're not imparting values on the next generation so that when they go out into the neighborhoods, they don't know how to react to one another. They get angry and they find a gun, they find a weapon, and they just take it out as they've seen it on video games and other things. We need to get back to basics. It's not that difficult when it comes to some of these issues. There are issues about availability of weapons and things of that nature, but at the end of the day, no program, no dollar can beat a good parent. Mm -hmm. Well, let's talk about the gangs for a minute and possible solutions. Chicago Mayor Lori Lightfoot announced an effort recently to sue gang members involved in violent crime. Will that approach work? I don't think that approach will work because, to be honest, gang members in the city of Chicago are not all cartel members. They don't live in mansions. They don't drive Bentleys. Most of them barely have $20 in their pocket and a pair of Nikes on their feet. We're not going to take them to civil court to sue them for that. They live in their family's basements, drive their grandparents' cars. It's not going to have the impact. All it will do, it will get a headline. Mm -hmm. uh, but as far as having an impact on the violence, it will not. Yep. And you mentioned families. Unfortunately, many of these youth who are finding themselves in gang life on the streets, involved in violence, don't have a stable family life. And so that's not an option for them. I recently spoke with a former gang member. His name is Jermaine Rhodes. And he was a teen on the streets. A former gang member approached him, uh, paid attention to him, and said, gang life ends in jail or the grave. And that man then became his mentor. I want to play just a portion of my interview with him, and then we can talk about it. It's not what he said, it's what he did. The fact that he never gave up on me. The fact that he was a role model. 
the fact that I had somebody that I can disappoint. I had somebody that I can let down for the first time in my life. And I refuse to let that man down. Most of us in the hood ain't got role models. We don't have somebody we can let down. So if you don't have nobody that you can let down, there's nothing stopping you from doing nothing bad. And it's because he never gave up on me. And I believe that that's the first time I, I want to say I have real love, like from a parent. Like I have real love. So, that's what it is in so together, Jermaine and also his mentor formed an organization called Saving Our Sons. As a leader in your community and across this city, is this a tool that we can use as a solution, using former gang members who have come out of it to approach those kids on the streets and say, listen, I'm watching you, I'm here for you, you have another option. Is that something that's being talked about at the higher levels of government here in Chicago? I don't think that's something that's being discussed as widely as it should. Clearly, gangs will fill the void when families are failing. Uh, and it seems that this gentleman's mentor stepped up to break that cycle, break that generational involvement in gangs to give him something else to aspire to and someone else to impress, as he said. You know, if we were to fund programs like that, we will continue to see success stories like this young man who was able to break away and find a different path that didn't lead to jail or to the grave. Mm -hmm. it, it, it worked in his case. Let's hope it works. I hope it continues it works to work. in others. We'll have you back and, and we'll see if that continues to happen. Uh, Alderman Raymond Lopez, appreciate your time tonight here on Thank this you, Nation. Marnie.